Construction workers spent hours patching up a gaping 10 by 10 foot hole bandits created when they drove right into the FMJ Armory on West Point Road in Troop County. Deputies say the concealed crook stole a Dodge Ram pickup truck just minutes before the pre-dawn break-in and rammed the vehicle right into the gun store, then started lifting weapons. They noticed a large hole in the side of the building where it appeared a vehicle had rammed through the building, and at that point they um, secured the exterior, several handguns and rifles that were taken from the location. Deputies have surveillance video, but they are not ready to release it. They say the bandits were only in the store two to three minutes, but they managed to steal quite a few handguns and rifles. They were in the wrong hands as soon as this crime happened, and now we're going on, you know, seven, eight hours and so, and so there's no telling where those weapons are right now. The stolen truck was found abandoned not far from the scene. Now that those guns are in the wrong hands, deputies want to catch the group of five or more before they use these weapons to commit more crime. They need the public's help. We have no idea. Atlanta, Columbus, Alabama, since we're so close to Alabama, we really have no idea right now because we have no, no suspects ID'd and no suspect vehicles ID'd at this point. Flags mark every single headstone here inside Marietta National Military Cemetery, a symbol that their sacrifice hasn't been forgotten. God bless America. Thousands stand beside the graves of the fallen this Memorial Day to honor their sacrifice to our country. It makes me feel good that they know that they're interested in this place and, and the ones that are gone and the ones that are still here. The Marietta National Military Cemetery is the final resting place for more than 19,000 service members whose lives are recognized each year during this Memorial Day observance. Every May, for decades, Margaret Long has made it a priority to be here. Just to see all the flags and the monuments and be where my husband, close by my husband's burial. Long's husband, Navy pilot Clyde D. Long, was buried here in 1953. Family members say his plane went down in Cedartown as the country prepared to shift military resources from World War II to the Korean War. Long visits her husband's grave a few times a year, but it's the decoration and ceremony of Memorial Day that makes this visit so special. Fantastic, really. They do this, you know, each year. It's just something else. I'm still glad I can still come to it. <laughs> Long will turn 95 later this summer. She and her husband were married for 10 years. In Marietta, Claire Sims, Fox 5 News. Mary Frances Early was not welcomed here on this campus when she came to the university almost 60 years ago, but she persevered during a very difficult racial climate. And today she marks history again as the first African American to have a school or building named in her honor. It was a long time coming, but the University of Georgia finally recognized Mary Frances Early for the courageous steps she took almost 60 years ago to desegregate the university. The president of Albany State University gave the keynote address and is one of thousands who stand on the shoulders of Miss Early. Including her rejection of an ability to disrupt the status quo, her willingness to do the unthinkable, willingness to be a de facto emissary for the marginalized and the voiceless, and her willingness to place herself in the eye of the storm. Many don't realize, and history did not reflect, that Miss Early graduated from UGA in 1962, before her more famous classmates, Charlene Hunter Galt and Hamilton Holmes. It wasn't until 1997 that then UGA professor Dr. Maurice Daniels discovered Early and her contributions and included them in a documentary. And they told me about this little known uh, lady in Atlanta who was the first black graduate of the University of Georgia. And this was 1997. The university renamed its School of Education for Early, making her the first African American to have a UGA building or school named in her honor. The humble historical treasure exuded grace as she explained 
why she chose to take on the storm. My choice was not the easy road of a well-known road. I chose to take the road less traveled by because I saw a need to do something. And so I said, I have a right to go. And so I did. Mary Frances Early opened the doors of opportunity for so many people, including myself. She is a role model who teaches all of us how to overcome adversity with grace. In Athens, Angelique Proctor, Fox 5 News. As I came out, I saw somebody running through the backyard with the lawnmower and the weed whip. A security camera captured that somebody taking off through a front yard. A.J. Grant lives next door. So I came through the gate, and as I came this way, I noticed there was a U-Haul parked over here. So the window was down, so I just came in and grabbed it and threw it in park and tried to get the keys out. Off camera, the driver punched Grant. On camera, the suspect seen leaving with the property took off running along Ashburton Avenue in southeast Atlanta. Run! A grassy area blocks away at Alexa Avenue and Morgan Place is where Grant wrestled the suspect. A neighbor helped hold him down. The guy was succumbed completely. Atlanta Police Lieutenant Carla Baldini off duty when the theft and chase took place Monday evening. I helped spearhead the uh, the off-duty patrol, mm -hmm. uh, after the off-duty police officers patrol the neighborhood, so I kind of help organize that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we collaborate with each other. Help direct responding officers to the scene. Baldini learned the takedown was somewhat second nature for Grant. When I saw him comfortably laying on this guy in some sort of wrestling hold, I realized that he didn't really need my help at all. The University of Michigan graduate is a two-time All-American wrestler who at 5'5", 150 pounds, pinned someone who tried to take from his community. Well, I guess just kind of part of being neighbors, really. I mean, he's in here stealing things from, from people, and I just wanted to make sure that he got in trouble for what he did. They are quick, convenient, and the city of Atlanta is putting the brakes on them. They generally move pretty quick, you know, about 16 miles per hour, so you definitely feel it. Uh, you're kind of swaying back and forth a little bit. It uh, goes quite a bit slower. Um, but like I said, it's for safety, so I understand it. Um, so I think it's going to be a good thing in the long run. Now in effect, maximum speeds along the belt line, 8 miles per hour. The change during certain parts of the day. This is a safety problem. People going too fast in a congested situation where you have kids and people walking and riding bikes and on skates and everything. So we just felt like we needed to and can impose these caps pretty easily and make people safer. Hours for the reduced speed zone Monday through Thursday from 6 at night until 6 in the morning and from Friday evening at 6 until 6 Monday morning. It's for safety as well, but I, I like going fast. <laughs> so but I understand why because there's a lot of people on here and you know, like she said, dogs and children. We just passed a school of children, and so I think it'd just probably be for the best. Portions along the east side of the Beltline are affected. I think it is going to slow some things down uh, moving through here, so I might uh, might be able to ride my bike a little bit more. We're looking at a series of things that would result in more regulation around the scooters because all cities are seeing this. There's so many of them and so many companies. We need to be more careful about how they're used in the city. May was an awesome month before for us because it involved Mother's Day, my mom's birthday, and every May we had a family reunion. Now the month that holds so many special memories is marked with how she died. These pictures taken on May 7th, that night just after 9.30, Atlanta police say a white Maserati slammed into a Metro Atlanta ambulance on the city's southwest side. Inside, 83-year-old Mary Rachel. The ambulance driver told police the car came out of nowhere at a high rate of speed as she turned from MLK Jr. Drive onto Adamsville Place. According to the police report, witnesses said an unknown vehicle came by and picked up the driver of the Maserati, then left the scene. This is a person that's obviously heartless 
and doesn't want to be held responsible or accountable for, for their actions. The ambulance transporting Miss Rachel from the hospital to her home at Martin House at Adamsville Place. The crash just feet from the building. You know, we were taught to forgive. Uh, however, I need to put, be able to put a face with the person that, to be, that needs to be forgiven. And until that time, I don't think I can start that process. He starts saying numbers. Four, three, I have to kill two people. I have a sword. I'm going to take your heads off. I'm like, sure you are. I'm like, sit back and put your seatbelt on. Uber driver Leah Santos says she initially tried to defuse the threats coming from her backseat passenger. But after 30 years of limo driving, she realized she had a real problem on her hands. The quick thinking 50 year old used one of her cell phones to dial Cobb County 911 for help, all while the threats continued. I have a sword behind me and I can't put my seatbelt on. I'm like, well, what are you going to do with that sword? He's like, I'm going to kill you guys. I'm going to take your head off. I'm like, OK. This grandmother from New York was clever enough to talk cryptically while communicating the danger to an operator. I can go shopping tomorrow with you. I have uh, someone in my Uber car right now. I nope. uh, can't really be on the phone. Okay, what street are you going, ma'am? Uh, North Marietta. Okay, so North, near where? What are you passing by? The operator was able to signal police and officers started following the black tundra with passenger Omari Colthrust apparently realizing police were trailing them and becoming more agitated. The way he was speaking was just so clear and like almost like a devil, like four, three, I'm going to kill you. Santos put the car in park and she and her friend in the front seat jumped out. Marietta police surrounded Colthrust and took him into custody. As I came out, I saw somebody running through the backyard with the lawnmower and the weed whip. A security camera captured that somebody taking off through a front yard. AJ Grant lives next door. So I came through the gate and as I came this way, I noticed there was a U-Haul parked over here. So the window was down, so I just came in and grabbed it and threw it in park and tried to get the keys out. Off camera, the driver punched Grant. On camera, the suspect seen leaving with the property took off running along Ashburton Avenue in southeast Atlanta. Run! A grassy area blocks away at Alexa Avenue and Morgan Place is where Grant wrestled the suspect. A neighbor helped hold him down. The guy was succumbed completely. Atlanta Police Lieutenant Carla Baldini off duty when the theft and chase took place Monday evening. I helped spearhead the uh, the off-duty patrol, the mm -hmm. uh, off-duty police officers patrol the neighborhood, so I kind of help organize that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we collaborate with each other. Help direct responding officers to the scene. Baldini learned the takedown was somewhat second nature for Grant. When I saw him comfortably laying on this guy in some sort of wrestling hold, I realized that he didn't really need my help at all. The University of Michigan graduate is a two-time All-American wrestler who at 5'5", 150 pounds, pinned someone who tried to take from his community. Well, I guess just kind of part of being neighbors, really. I mean, he's in here stealing things from, from people, and I just wanted to make sure that he got in trouble for what he did.